In this tutorial, we're going to carry on with our look at the uh, 3U math summative. And as you can see, I've chosen a different piece of art than the last one uh, because I wanted to actually do a little bit more and giving you an idea of, of how you should be doing the work on the piece. And I thought this would lend itself to one uh, shape in particular, which is a straight line. My previous piece didn't have a straight line in it. And I'm just going to do a little example for you with a straight line. Now, before I do that, the first thing I need to do is choose my coordinate axes and in general you're going to either I mean you can put your you can put your origin anywhere you can put zero zero anywhere but I would recommend you're probably going to you're going to set up your X and Y axis with the X and Y running through the middle something along those lines so in that case there's my origin uh, at this point is zero zero or you might choose to do something along the lines of your X and Y kind of off to the side. So the advantage of doing it this way is that it's going to result in all of your values being positive. Now how you choose to do that, it's up to you. Since this is the last one I've drawn, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to label my graph this way. Oh, it's kind of messy. So there's my x and y axes and then I'm going to have to choose a scale. Now again, the scale you choose is entirely arbitrary. Uh, you can choose every block to be 1. You can choose every block to be 0.1. You can choose every block to be 50 if you want to. Just make sure you choose something that's consistent because once you choose your scale, that's the scale that applies to, to everything in your drawing. So I think I'm just going to choose every block to be equal to 1, and then I'm going to divide this off. So that would give me, uh, if I count it off on the x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, since this is something that you're doing, you've got some lots of time to work on this, particularly if you start early enough. And so take your time and make sure you do a nice job of these things. To be honest with you, I'm probably going to do an okay job here but you can take your time make sure everything is about as neat as you can possibly make it presentation does matter with this so don't rush through things don't leave it to the last minute and you will be rewarded at least to a small extent for doing that so I put a scale on here um, and now I'm just going to uh, for example I'm going to look at this graph or sorry I'm going to look at this and I'm going to try to find the shapes that are in there you can be you can you can be somewhat creative in in choosing the shapes that you're looking for you're looking for functions so you're going to choose things appropriately so functions for example pass the vertical line test um, some people have asked me about what about having a vertical sinusoid you can't have that that does not pass the vertical line test so avoid things like that uh, in looking at the graph that i've got here there are a number of things now i'm just going to very quickly scribble some things on here just to give you an idea so for example, along these keys, I might see a straight line. Um, this one's a pretty obvious one for a, maybe a sinusoidal. You might see something like that as a sinusoidal graph. Now some people might ask, <clears throat> what do I do between here and here? Because it doesn't actually look like the sinusoidal graph continues from here. The way I'd recommend you handle that is you just use a dashed line to, uh, to connect the two and then when you specify your domain and range you're going to have one part of your domain will be from here to here and another part of your domain will be from here to here so you essentially using the terminology from domain and range you'll exclude this area in between uh, that technically isn't part of the graph uh, we can see that we've got in this bubble that's a pretty good circle and so i might do something like that for my circle and uh, I might take this as along this along this edge. I might say, oh, that looks like my uh, that looks like a, the one half of a rational function. So I imagine the asymptote something along those lines. Um, I'm sure I could keep going here. Maybe I use this as part of my parabola, and so on. So I've got all sorts of options in here in picking out the art. Now you're going to take, take your time, uh, you're going to be really careful, 
And once I've done that, I can start picking out points on my graphs, and that's going to allow me to come up with a number of different properties. So that's the thing I'm going to look at now, which is I'm going to take a, a closer look at my straight line. So let's just back everything out that I had done before. And we're going to focus on the straight line. So I'm actually going to take my time, use my straight line tool, and I'm just going to take one of the edges along these keys uh, and I'm going to use that as my straight line. So from there to there, that's one edge along the key. As you can, as you can see, I'm only selecting the part that's actually within the, the piece of art that I have. And in this case, what am I going to do? Well, to me, the easiest thing to do here would actually be to say, well, there's a, there's a point that's pretty much on the intersection of two grid lines. And then up above it, there's actually another point and that one's okay. That one's maybe a little bit off. So when you draw the points, that you have to be careful because by drawing these points, I've actually, I've actually made it more difficult to see what the coordinates are for these. And so what I'm going to use here is the point, let's call that point number one. So it looks like this is the X coordinate for this one is 33. Now again, you wouldn't draw this. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and sketch things here because I'm doing this as kind of a rough copy. You're going to want to present your work in a, a nicer way. So there's the point 33 and the Y value looks like it's 14. And then I've got another point here. And it point number two, it appears to have an X value. It's a little bit shy of 34. No, sorry, 35. So it's about, let's say, 34 point, I'm going to say it's about 34.8. And the Y value, well, where I've chosen it to be is actually I chose it so it would have an exact Y value of 18. With those two points, well, that's really all I need for a straight line. I can find the equation of a straight line from two points. So if I uh, move on to another page, Oh, it made a copy of the uh, of the graphic. That's not exactly what I wanted to have happen. Okay, so in that case, I'll just do my work right here, and I'll just overlay it. The black ink appears to be showing up reasonably well. So uh, for a straight line, well, the equation of a straight line is y equals mx plus b. And in this case, the first my first step is I'm going to find the slope. The slope is equal to delta y over delta x which in this case, delta y is going to be 18 minus 14 divided by 34.8 minus 33. And so I end up with a value of 4 divided by 34.8 minus 33 is going to be equal to 1.8. And if I do a quick calculation with that, 4 divided by 1.8, I end up with 2.2 repeated. So 2.2, and that 2 is going to be repeated. The reason I'm keeping track of that for now is I might need to use it later. Actually, I will need to use it because the next thing I need to do is I need to calculate what is my B value. So the next thing I'll, I'll do is I will sub one of my points. I'll sub the first point, 33, 14, into, and the equation I'll sub it into is going to be Y equals, you know what, I think I'm going to keep the, I'm going to keep just the fractional component of that because it's got a lot more precision. So I'm going to sub that into 4 over 1.8 times the x value, which is 33, plus b. So I'm subbing this into the equation 4 over 1.8x plus b. And I'm going to sub in values for the x and the y. So the y value is actually equal to 14. And then I go ahead and multiply this stuff out. If you wanted to work in, it's not a terrible idea. If you want to work in exact values, we can just take this whole mess and multiply everything by 10. And actually, that's something I might do down here. Um, if I multiply this by 10 over 10, then I end up with 40 over 18. And that's going to be the same as 20 over 9. That actually gives me an exact slope. So that would have been a better way uh, to do this. So how about I, uh, I'm just going to take a, 
I'm going to rewind a bit there. Let's see if we can find it. So let's erase that now. And let's make a do a better job of the equation. So now the equation is going to be denoted as 20 over 9 times x plus b. And that gives me, so I'm, when I sub in my values, I end up with 14 equals 20 divided by 9 multiplied by the x value, which is 33, plus b. And so I end up with 14 equals, uh, let's see, 11, 3 goes into 33 11 times, 3 goes into 9 3 times. So I end up with 20 times 11 divided by 3. Uh, so let's see, 20, 20 times 11 is 220 divided by 3 plus b. And then I'm going to need a common denominator. So how do I put 14 over 3? I multiply it by 3 over 3. And so 3 times 14 is going to be 42 over 3 minus 220 over 3 is equal to my b value. And then my b value in the end is, is equal to 42 minus 220, which is going to be negative 178 all over 3. I'm just going to double check that. I think I've done everything correctly here. So 20 times 11, just double checking that, is 220. And then 220 minus 42 is 178. So that's my y-intercept. And so now we end up with my final equation, y equals 20 over 9 multiplied by x minus 178 over 3. And so that is, that's my equation. Now, to be honest with you, this presentation is not adequate. The work is here, but of course I'm not scribbling this stuff over top of my image under normal circumstances. That's just a limitation of the software. For some reason when I created another page, it actually made a duplication of the graphic as well. But um, ignoring that part, we now have an equation here. There's some things we could do with this equation to further uh, verify it. We could come up with this equation another way. Are there other points we could use? Sure there are. There are some points in between here. Um, or we could substitute some points in and make sure that these points make sense. We could do a left side, right side check to make sure that it actually even verifies the original points we started with. And all of those are things that if you choose to do them, there are things that you should show as part of your summative because verifying the work that you've done uh, shows that you're putting some thought into that and there will be marks on the summative that are associated with not only with just coming up with the equation which is something we've practiced throughout the course but uh, in addition to coming up with the equation you also want to be able to verify that this equation is the best possible equation uh, if it came down to it, I could just create a table of values and I could graph this straight line and make sure that it actually ends up on my graph the same way. If we imagine, imagine I graphed that straight line and I ended up getting something like that. Well, that would tell me that there was something wrong with my, uh, something wrong with my equation or something wrong with my arithmetic. Whereas if I graph this and I end up with that as my straight line, well, then I'm pretty confident that that's actually the correct representation for my two points. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Hopefully it gives you a little bit more guidance on some of the things that you're going to do on this, uh, this summative assignment. And you can see I've chosen the, the easiest one possible, which is the straight line. You're going to do that for all of the functions that we've done in the class. And as you can imagine, it does get more difficult. But I want you to keep in mind that these are things that we've done. Every single function that I've assigned you we have done an exercise in class where we have started with a graph and we have figured out what the equation is from that graph. So you need to keep in mind this is stuff that you have learned, stuff you have practiced, and in many of the cases this is things, these are things that many of you have shown you can do. So don't be intimidated by the fact that you're doing all of these together.